Hey guys, Andy here from Mediocre Hobbies coming at you with a very cool video. Cromlech recently sent me out a nice care package of miniatures to paint up and try their stuff. And I, of course, chose the beautiful Def Cruza miniature. He is a huge pirate war boss in mega armor. Uh, and I decided to paint him up here today. What I did slightly differently than the uh, Cromlech people did on the website one was that I don't go in for the bright colors uh, and cartoony style of orcs. I do not feel that orcs are comic relief in the 41st millennium. I feel they are terrifying and I think they deserve an appropriately terrifying scheme and story to go alongside them. So that's what I've tried to do here today. I'm going to try and make him look much more menacing on the tabletop. And uh, yeah, I think I pulled it off. Before I get into the video, I just want to say a huge thank you to all of my active patrons. Without you guys, I would not be able to keep the lights on and the cameras rolling. If you're interested in becoming a member of my Patreon, some of the benefits you get are a private Discord server where you can hang out with me on a daily basis and talk about your hobby and to access to an extra video every single week. So that's 52 extra videos a year just for Patreon members. So without further ado, guys, let's get into the video. And this is Orc Corsair Warlord Death Cruiser, an absolutely immense miniature, rivaling the size of Gazgul Thraka himself. And my guess is he's supposed to be used as an alternate sculpt for him if you want to have a pirate uh, orc army. Like I said in the beginning of this video, I think of orcs as a terrifying enemy. And I do not want to do them injustice with the colorful color schemes and uh, the kind of silly natured side of them. I want to go more grim and more dark. So the first thing I'm going to do after I construct the model and spray it black is I'm going to go in with Rhinox Hide at all of the metal parts, all of his armor. I'm going to go for a rusty scheme for the armor like I do for most of my orcs. And then I'm going to add my colors of choice after that. Because it is such a large black object in the center of the screen, it of course does not like to be focused on. It likes to focus on my hands and anything other than the model for a little bit until I get some actual color on. So once the Rhinox hide has been applied to all of the armor panels, including the massive cannon and anchor that he has as his close combat weapon, it's then time to add a little bit of color to the rust. So we're going to be using the dry paint riser rust, surprise, surprise, and we're going to be stippling this all over the armor panels and metal parts of the miniature again. So basically anywhere that you have done the Rhinox hide, we are going to go in and do uh, the riser rust scheme in this stippling technique. So all I have is a medium flat dry brush that's kind of frayed and worn away um, and I just basically uh, load that up with paint, wipe the majority of it off and then basically stab at the model leaving behind these kind of mottled patterns of orange. It needs to be kind of not uniform to make it look natural. This is the same thing I did for my other orc warlords and other orc characters and vehicles because even though these are a bunch of separate vi um, videos I do plan to lump them all together and create an orc army at some stage soon. So that is okay. So before I go on to making the finishing off the rust, I just want to add in some color, basically the beginnings of some color that would have been worn off and wiped away. And I think this is the appropriate time to get the first coat of that on before I start doing any of the real weathering. So I'm going to go in with the Avalon Sunset color. This is of course a pirate war boss. So I feel a bad moon orc is in, uh, is the correct choice. I'm not going to go crazy with the amount of yellow on the armor. I'm actually going to save that for the kind of, I don't know, like dive suit, the under fatigues that he has is where I'm going to apply most of the yellow. I'm going to leave most of the armor just down and dirty and rusty and grungy. I want this guy to be serving in the bells of starship boarding actions and all sorts. So after I've applied the yellow parts, the Avalon Sunset to the parts I want on the armor, I'm going to go for a Celestra Grey. And that's just for some of the orc glyphs and stuff on the armor. So there's a couple of these stamped about on his shoulder pad, on his forearm, some on that big power pack that's powering his suit, and a few other bits and pieces around the models. So just have a, a good old nosy if this is something that you're going to be painting yourself and try and find them all. I know that I nearly forgot the one on the side of his power pack when I was painting mine. After that, we are going to dry brush all of the metallic parts with lead belcher. We will do a little bit of more weathering later on, but for now, I just want to get the kind of rust tone where I want it to. Like I said, this is a great time to do this. We put the yellow on already, so then we dry brush over the silver. It's going to catch all of that and make it look like chipped, old, and worn paint, which is exactly the technique that we want to achieve. 
I have all sorts of amazing stories brewing in my head as to what this war boss is going to be in my collection. I don't think he will be Warlord Death Cruiser. He will be part of season two of my narrative campaign, Leading an Orc Force. And I cannot wait to bring that to the tabletop and uh, let you guys know all about him. The base will slowly get done as I progress through this video, but I won't be talking about how I did it. I've done that a million times in a million videos. If you're curious as to how I do my gray basing scheme, I have a playlist in my well, basing playlist, which will show you how to do that. So now that I'm back at Averland Sunset, I'm just gonna apply this to, like I said, all of the undersuit of this model. They did that kind of like a creamy bony color. I'm gonna go for the uh, kind of army white color, the bad moons, so I'm gonna do that in yellow. I know it looks kind of gaudy and bright now, but we will be knocking it back a bit with a shade later on, so don't panic too much. Mechanic Standard Grey was my color of choice for all of the straps holding on armor panels and going around legs and stuff like that. There's a couple of them around the place. Let's just try and find them. Uh, it is card. Sometimes they do blend into the design of the that kind of oversuit. I use the reference picture from the Cromlech website to know exactly where all of the straps are. From there, I'm gonna start with the skin. So I'm gonna use Wa Flesh as my base paint for that. And because I went for the uh, kind of fully enclosed head, the only bit of skin showing is that kind of right bicep and shoulder area. That, that's literally all the orc skin. That's uh, I think it's the least amount of orc skin I have ever seen on a, an orc model, which of course speeds along the process. Just a hint as to what he could be under there. I added a little bit more gray to the model there in case you hadn't noticed in that transition. His hat went gray and some of the cabling and pipes and stuff that I may have forgot to do when I did the straps. Zandri Dust was then used to base coat the bone. If you're wondering where the bone parts are on this kind of model, there's obviously a huge jaw bone underneath the front of the cannon. And then there's a, another kind of jaw bony thing on his foot. Now, normally this model has this like hunk of junk hanging out the front of the cannon that gets fired out. And it's, I think that adds a bit more to that kind of comedy style of model. I decided not to include those, not to add them in. I prefer the idea of a high explosive piece of ordnance being shot down at you as opposed to like a squeaky toy and stuff. Brightened up the yellow a little bit and then I'm trying, now it's time to try and brighten up the skin. So we're going to go for a two stage highlight on that tiny bit of exposed skin. So we're going to start with War Boss Green. Just feather that on in the kind of direct direction the muscle stretches. I always found that makes a really nice difference. Shows the highlighted of the skin uh, quite well. As you can see, rotating the model. Once again, going down in the direction that the, oils, the muscle will stretch. It just gives her a more natural result. At least I've found anyway. After that, we are going to jump over to Scar Snake Green and finish off the skin. Basically exactly the same stage as we did last time, but just a little bit lighter on the highlights. This is just kind of the last touch on the skin that you want to achieve. I have worked with resin models for years. Unfortunately, most of that time has been with Games Workshop and their fine cast. So resin kind of had a bad taste in my mouth and it's only now that i have moved away from uh, games workshop resins and i've uh, other companies have sent me miniatures and i've got to test out theirs that i do know that the uh, the worth of a beautiful resin miniature and i can tell you that when i opened the box from cromlech and got this miniature out i was very pleasantly surprised this the sculpt is beautiful and the casting was flawless you get three options for heads with this guy and everything so i can thoroughly recommend the quality of cromlech and just so you know, although I did receive this miniature for free from them um, to make a video and make a promotion, they did not pay me a thing. So I'm not under obligation to say anything nice from them. Um, but I do attest to their quality. They sent me a set of squigs and a few other bits and pieces that I will be painting uh, at a later date, perhaps on a stream. Uh, but they're also stunning sculpts. Okay, it's time for what I think is going to be the focal point of this miniature, and that's the glow. When I think about this guy stomping his way through space hulks and down the corridors, um, all pitch black except for the light coming from his uh, head lumens attached to his armor, and I thought about what kind of glow would seem the most menacing. So what I did was I got the bold titanium white color from AK, which is just the best white paint on the market. I absolutely love it. 
and I applied that to all of the lumens and lights on him, including the big face mask. And after that, I moved over to Green Sephora's Intensity Ink Phoenix Orange. This is a really bright, vibrant, and colorful orange. And it works a treat for this job. And all I did was fill in all those bits that I did white with this, and it gives you a really nice glow effect, this orange. It's gonna complement the rust, it's gonna complement the yellow uniform, it's not gonna to be too harsh like green or blue or red. I'm glad I went with this color because I honestly think it suited it really, really well. After that, it's time to work on the uh, bone a little bit more. So we're gonna go through Screaming Skull and just add a quick highlight layer to all of those jaw bones. Just a simple, same as the skin. It's kind of like a feathering technique, picking the direction the bone will be, going along the teeth lower jaw I'm just kind of following the natural shade points leaving it nice and dark and where the bone dips in and doing the same thing for the jawbone wrapped around his foot and with that we have a finished Def Cruiser miniature I absolutely love how this turned out I haven't got a name for my personal one yet. If you guys have any ideas on what names should be this guy, um, please put them in the comments below. Whatever inspires you, whatever jumps out of you. I'm gonna show you a couple of high definition pictures now of the final result. I'd love to let me know if you guys have worked with Cromlech before, any of their miniatures, what are your favorites? Any recommendations on future miniatures to get from them? And if you haven't checked out Cromlech, I will leave a link below in the comments are in the description, sorry, and you can go and check them out for yourself. They have some absolutely incredible things on their website. I definitely think it's worth your time. Okay, guys, I am super pleased with how my Def Cruiser turned out. He is awesome. Um, I really like the orange glow I got on the lights and on his eye lens. I have a whole story in my head about what he is, where he comes from, and what kind of forces he leads and who he works for. And hopefully I'll be able to share that with you guys in an upcoming campaign on my channel soon. Thank you for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, make sure you give the video a like. Likes push it out to more people, more people that see it, more people that watch it, helps the channel grow. If any questions about anything I did in today's video, please put it in the comments below and I will get back to each and every one of you guys. And lastly, the algorithm tells me that about 60 to 70% of the people that watch my videos are not subscribed. So it really would make a huge bit of difference if you guys would hit that subscribe button. Thank you guys so much for sticking around at the end of the video. I'll see you in the next one.